thank you all for coming. Um, and I'd first like to thank June, Paul, and uh, Mary and Paula for allowing me the space to take this project on. It's one of those things, you know, where I proposed it and then they called me back and they said, you know, great. And then, and then I was like, oh. I, I came up with, I had like, I don't know, 10 minutes to come up with the title because it was like, we need a title. And I was like, okay. <laughs> What's the title? It's one of those. Yeah, it's like I got to make the piece. Now I've got to name it, everything. But, um, but yeah, sometimes those pressure moments, you get, you get to a point of clarity where you don't overthink it too much, you know, and it just kind of hits you and you're like, and you're thankful that you don't have so much time to kind of dig through it and question yourself and all of that stuff. So I was, I was happy with Vessel. And I always refer back to um, the Lao Tzu poem, and one of his lines in his poem is, um, shape clay into a vessel. It is the space within that makes it useful. And that's always resonated for me in all, in all my work. This piece kind of combines um, kind of my two loves, which is creating an empty space with form, but then also creating a pattern that is a, a repetitious pattern that emerges through a process. When I, when I had the half scale drawing and, and that had it skewed at an angle and with these um, kind of layers drawn on it, and that's how I calculated it out. And I stepped back from that drawing one night and it really, it looked like the, the tilt of a ship, you know, at sea, catching wind, you know, the hull of a ship. And I did some research on um, kind of old uh, round boats, coracles, which are usually smaller kind of basket-like boats that are used in Tibet and other cultures to kind of navigate rivers. But then there's also a notion that the Noah's Ark was a coracle. Vessel also became kind of a spiritual metaphor for me in terms of our bodies as vessels. And you know, our bodies are the vessels that we carry around, our spirits reside in these vessels. And, um, and so it touched on a lot of those different elements that I wanted to bring into the piece. The timbers are all from an old church um, that was salvaged <clears throat> up in uh, Whatcom County, Skagit County. And it was, um, it was gonna be my wife's studio. But we had these timbers and they were, we had them covered up and they were beginning to just about turn. And so they, they pr provided the perfect um, material for this piece in a, in a kind of spiritual and a sacred place. I did a half scale drawing of the piece when I started. In the half-scale drawing, I had it sized out to about nine feet, four inches. And I got to probably right around here. Um, and that's where I just started really thinking that this piece is getting really big. <laughs> you know, it's like, and I was looking at my studio and I was looking at the piece. And I was like, that's getting really big. And so I, I scaled it back a little bit in the drawing. And then, um, and then I kept building. But the piece kept getting bigger. So it ended up being nine feet, two inches. And then weighing it was a real um, pickle. I mean, that was a, that was a problem. Um, I eventually, I ordered a, um, a hanging uh, hoist scale. And I've got a um, kind of a manual forklift in my shop. Once I had it all built, I spent two days um, taking it apart by myself, um, piece by piece, which was a whole series of rigging and straps and, um, and weighing each section of the bowl. And so I ended up um, under what I estimated, which was great. So it, it ended up about 2,500 pounds. The windows provide a dramatic view to the inside of the bowl. And when you came into the gallery, you were more confronted with the exterior and you didn't have a real sense of what was inside. There are little slivers and cracks where you can peer through and kind of get a hint of what's inside, but it's not obvious what that um, interior is. I did a one inch scale model of the whole gallery and then, um, then a one inch scale of the bowl and played with kind of exact proportions within the space as well as um, you know which window was going to be the best viewing point for it. And so for me this was a way to kind of um, acknowledge the people who live in this neighborhood, give them something beautiful to look at without necessarily having to be threatened by entering a gallery or confronted with not knowing what to do in an art gallery. 
I mean, the first 10 to 15% is the hardest to get through to kind of, you know, when you're, when you've spent a week and you're, you know, and you're up to like there, you know, and you're like, I've got a long ways to go. But, but once I get kind of past that um, 15, get into 20%, and then, then kind of momentum takes over. The other issue is as, as I got to build it, um, and I built probably this, this far up before I had glued anything together. And, you know, because I was just in building mode. I was building and stacking, building and stacking, building and stacking. And then I realized that I've got to start attaching these pieces together. And so I took all of those pieces apart, which ended up being just a disaster because suddenly they were all over the place and they didn't fit back together exactly the way that they did the first time. So after that experience, I realized that every time I cut a piece and put it down, it's gonna get glued and attached and build it that way. The first um, layer of triangles kind of appeared in um, working with the dimensions of the timber and trying to get the curve out of each piece of timber that I wanted. And I was cutting them all on a bandsaw. And so each piece at that curve, each piece had four different radiuses. There was an inside radius and an outside radius for the bottom piece and an inside and outside for the top of the block. And so as I cut through, you know, I, I would get some of that flat edge to show. And once I saw that first layer, I realized that this was a pattern that I really wanted to play with. And, um, and then I began to kind of manipulate that, kind of exploit it and, and tweak it as I went along. Yeah, Don got me the right kind of bandsaw blades, which actually cut my cutting time in half. So yeah, get good blades. And actually my bandsaw broke on the very last day, so now I gotta start looking for a new bandsaw. <laughs> but it made it all the way through to the last day. I pulled the last piece off of it and the table just went <laughs> 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 It was done. So, so the outside is all a, um, it's a water soluble uh, carbon <clears throat> and it's, um, it's a little tiny carbon disc that's you know probably an inch and a half by an inch and a half by a quarter inch. And, um, and I ordered 13 of these discs thinking that, you know, this is a big piece. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, it's the art graph, little carbon disc. And you know, and you rub it on like a crayon and then spray it with water and then it just kind of penetrates in. So I ordered 13 of these thinking, you know, that's, that's gotta be enough. So I went through barely two of these discs to do the whole, to do the whole piece. And then the whole piece is covered with a, um, food grade, uh, it's actually a butcher block conditioner. It's uh, mineral oil, um, beeswax, and carnauba wax. And so that covers the whole outside and the, and the inside. The shape really began to kind of look like a planet to me in its orbit, in its tilt, in its axis. And the beeswax um, was a, and I, and I talk about it being a, a symbol of a, a once thriving population and it's the remnants after the honey is gone, after everything has been eaten, everything is used up, the wax is left. And the carbon for the exterior was part of that, um, part of that notion as well. 19 individual pieces. The largest one is 400 pounds, and then they range from um, basically 100 pounds, and then the heaviest piece I think is about 165 pounds. And each layer is one inch dowels, um, that kind of pin, each layer together and they're keyed and interlocked. But it was, I worked, I started on March 29th and then worked pretty much seven days a week, 10, 12 hours a day until the morning we installed it.
one trip, one big U-Haul. And we actually had it unloaded and set up in three hours. Yeah, which was, I was predicting at least a full day, if not a return the next day. But yeah, no, it was because we had so many people. Inside was really intense. Um, and it's, um, I mean, the, the thing absorbs sound. It sucks sound. It's like a sound vacuum inside. It's a completely different environment um, inside of it. But it's also, I mean, it has an interesting, uh, real kind of optical illusion because it's kind of like a zoetrope. You know, and so if you get in, you start moving slowly, you get this almost kind of animated, you know, of the pattern. I, I told myself when I started this piece that I was not going to think about where it was going to end up or else I was not going to build it. You know, if, if I entered into that notion of what am I going to do with this thing? Well, if I could put it anywhere, I'd put it out in the middle of Moab, you know, mm -hmm. southern Utah in the desert on the on the on the rock flats with the little water pools in the sky above. If I could put it anywhere, that's where I'd put it. Well, thank you all for coming. No, this is wonderful.